welcome to another lesson in our little mini program here. Um, in my big program, I have uh, two things that repeat themselves every single week, or it's the same subjects I'm taking up. And that is, first of all, licks and phrases, and then it's tricks of the trade. And in this video, I'm going to talk mostly about licks and phrases, because um, what I'm doing there is I'm taking something, and that's, that's the thing that's always been, been annoying me, uh, is that you learn a bunch of licks, or you learn a, a phrase here, and a lick there, and a sequence there, and then you do, actually don't know how to combine those different elements. And we, I have a system for that in, in the neoclassical program here, but another way of really looking into what is going on here is just taking pieces of a solo, or just a phrase of it, and then looking at what, what scales are we using, uh, what sequences, and, and what notes are we ending on, and just just analyzing it so that we're content, so that we know what is going on. We might not be able to do it, but at least we know now what it takes to get there. And, as I said, I have tools that, that will train you in combining these different elements, uh, so you get to the point where it's automatic. But until then, it's a very good mental exercise to really look into what, uh, what goes on when, when things, are, things are just flowing, and what different elements are we using. And the little thing I was just playing there is an example of that. A very a short little uh, phrase that I will just analyze for you so that we can see what, what's actually being used, what tools are being used, and what am I doing. And that's a very important element to repeat over and over again. And then uh, each week you can then look into and say, okay, this phrase I really like, so I want to learn that. And of course there's taps and charts with, uh, charts <laughs> with everything. So you can sit down and learn the actual phrase. Uh, I'm not a big believer in just learning a bunch of licks because then you'll be a lick uh, producing or playing guitarist instead of one that is creative and free, really. And you might run out of licks because you can only remember and learn so many licks. So it's important to have different tools than just licks. But licks are a very good way of analyzing what goes on. So let's just today look at what's, what goes on here. And uh, if you feel like it, you can sit down and practice it. Um, because these phrases consist of different techniques like sweep picking, alternate picking, economy picking, whatever, and little phrasing tools like vibrato, like sliding and bending, and then, they are, uh, then there are different tools in there, there are arpeggios and scales. And so we're going to pick what I just played apart, and then you can practice that. But beware that you are practicing several different tools and several different techniques when you practice this. And then that might get you overwhelmed, because it's one thing to work at a, at a, at a select technique that you want to master. It's another it's completely other thing to just practice alternate picking, sweep picking and everything in one, in one group of, of notes here, and then to all, also go into and say what scales are we using, so that might be overwhelming. Or it might be a fun process for you, but please beware that learning phrases is a great idea, but only great if they're combined with a basic understanding and a basic training of the actual tools that we use to create the phrase in the first place. That's how to, to become a real, really skilled musician, is to know what makes up the cool stuff instead of, instead of just learning the cool stuff because that enables you to create your own stuff. So this is my stuff that I'm showing you now so that you can analyze it and see what it contains so that you can make your own stuff. All learn this. Let's, let's do it. So here's a, uh, a little, um, I might just play it again for you. So that's it. And basically, I'm in the first position, uh, natural minor scale, A minor scale. And if you go to the website, uh, you can find a chart that shows you that, that pattern. And you can, of course, lay that scale out as three number strings, or the traditional uh, uh, shape where you have two notes on one string to keep that shape uh, strictly vertical. Um, but, and then we're using the A minor uh, arpeggio, so we have A, C, and E, and we, co we continue that up the fretboard uh, and play up through that uh, pattern. I think you know these two uh, tools already. And then you simply uh, use sweep picking all the way. And if you don't know it already, 
You pick the, the note in the fifth fret with your first finger, eighth fret, fourth finger. You pick up stroke on the first note, down stroke in the eighth fret. Then you go to the A string, seventh fret, E, and the A now on the new string. And you, from now on, it's only down strokes all the way down. Uh, uh, in the seventh fret on the D string, fifth fret on the G string, fifth on the B string, fifth on the high E string, and then the highest note there is in the eighth fret on the E string. So you have two notes on the E string and two notes on this E string. Um, and you sweep picking to get there. And of course, I'm going to go into a uh, great deal of detail around these techniques and shapes and so on in the program. But for now, we just glaze grazing over it. So you go up the arpeggio and then you play the little melody in the end there. So you hit the seventh fret with a down stroke because that's what you got now. And then up stroke in the eighth fret on the high E string and then fifth fret. And then you control the speed of the sweep on your way up. So you don't have to go. You can, you can influence that because uh, I was just playing this without the backing track, so you can just decide uh, how that should sound. So practice really leaning into that and see if you can increase the tempo as you go. Uh, and then uh, what happens from there is we go into an, ooh, an E major uh, or Phrygian uh, sound now. And if you don't uh, know what that is, you will. Um, but so we change the sound of the scale and we also change the scale to harmonic minor. So we're not playing natural minor now, we're playing harmonic minor. And for that we go... So we go to the 4th, the 5th, and the 7th fret on the high E string. And we pick those, all of them, and then we pull off. And we can pick them all because this is not fast stuff. It just sounds really... Sounds great when... It sounds great when you pull them off, or at least to me. So you pick the 4th, the 5th, and the 7th fret and pull them off again. And then you play, you sweep picking again, you sweep over, or you just hit that with an upstroke, the B string in the 6th fret, and then the 7th fret on the G string. And again, I know that I'm not doing close-ups here, it would be nice, uh, but I can do much more video if I just do it in one take. And we have tabs for you, and in the, the actual program I'm going to do very, very uh, close-ups. <laughs> Very uh, close shots of, of the action over here. So you go, and then 6th and 7th fret on the G string. Actually, I think I... I think I go... We're just going to follow the arpeggio with some scale notes. So you hit this 7th fret with an upstroke on the G string, and then you go down to the 5th uh, fret, and then down to the 4th fret. <coughs> and then, so you go... Then you hit the 6th fret on the D string it is, and then with an upstroke, and then the 8th fret on the A string with an upstroke. And then you go chromatically down uh, to the D on the A string in the 5th fret. So let me just play that slowly for you. And we, we took this first part and we said that we're, we're in the A minor triad here, an arpeggio. And then we add the, the ninth there, it's a very, very neat note, very nice note. And I'm not expecting anyone to have control over where the ninth is and where the sixth is in the playing moment. But now we're analyzing, we're putting some theory to the praxis here. And, and uh, so that's all right then. <laughs> so we have the ninth, 
Sounds very nice. Also with the chord. So that's a nice note. And then we move from the A minor round to the dominant uh, E major. And then we go to the, the A flat diminished triad. And the reason why we're moving there, I'm going to explain to you thoroughly in the program, of course. But we add this, instead of just doing the actual uh, arpeggio, which would look like this, and it's also charted out in, in the notes that come with this little lesson. Instead of just playing the scale notes, we're going to put, every time we have two notes on a string, we're going to put uh, a scale note in between here. So we do, instead of just, which would be the arpeggio, we put that A in there in the fifth fret. And on this note, this string, we put uh, uh, the C in there uh, in the fifth fret on the G string. So we go. And that gives us a kind of a sound of an arpeggio and, and not an arpeggio. And you can do that all the way down. You would just add the note in the seventh fret in this arpeggio uh, and get. And that's an excellent way of doing really, really smooth lines that sound amazing over, uh, for instance, if you take the A minor chord and then you go. That's another story, but but uh, but instead of just using the scale, now we're going to go chromatically down on the last string here. So we have, and then from there I go, and that is a little sequence we're using now, which goes like this, which is. Uh, um, uh, but I started by playing three notes first, and then I go. So that sequence is being used now, uh, and that's a, sequ a sequence, of course, and, and it sounds like this. So you play these three notes first, starting on the A string in the fifth fret, seventh and eighth, then you go 5th fret uh, and 8th fret, or 7th fret, sorry, you go. And then you continue, you hit the 8th the fret on the low E string, and then the 5th fret again on the A string. That's the melody you're going to play now. Using alternate picking, just using whatever pick stroke fits the next. Uh, it's either up or down. So, then I hit the seventh fret on the low E string, and then the eighth fret. So now we have. You can hear the sequence now. And then the fifth and the seventh. But instead of just going. get to that low A there, I hit it two, two times, and I hit the seventh fret with the hammer on, and then I pull off down to the A again in the fifth fret, like that, and then I just slide down uh, to the G sharp there, or A flat, uh, in, the, in the fourth fret. And then I play the A minor. So that's the whole thing. Let me just play that last part for you slowly. So let me play the whole thing again, just so you have it in your head, and then let's do a slow version. That's it. First thing, just a short recap. Sweep the A minor triad. You hit the highest point and you go. 
and you go down to the diminished triad, but you put scale notes in between, so you go. And then chromatically down from the 8th fret on the A string to the 5th. That's the first note in the last part. As you can hear, I keep changing the tempo all the time because I'm using what would what is a, a more classical time frame, really. Because classical musicians are not used to having this uh, this strict beat yet that you follow. You can go up and down in tempo and use the tempo uh, in itself as one of the parameters of expression. So you can play fast, you can do this, you can play loud, you can play, and and you can also increase or decrease the tempo. We don't do that a lot in, in uh, melodic rock, but when you have no backing, it's really neat to explore using that. carried away there. Uh, it's a really neat uh, thing to explore uh, using that uh, element as well. So that was a phrase and an explanation, the, the elements, the scales, and it's when we do uh, three or four of those every single week, then you start really getting a very deep understanding of what goes on uh, in every part of what people play, so that you can point to any guitar player and say, oh, now he's, oh, there he goes using, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that consists of, what tools and what elements, and that's really a great thing. And it also makes it so much easier to uh, transcribe other people's stuff and to really listen for what goes on there, because when you know he's in harmonic minor, when you know he's using an arpeggio there, when you know he's using a sequence there, then you can start piecing that together, those elements, and that makes it so much easier to listen for the exact notes he's playing and to really... Uh, get that and that's a really nice skill to have when you practice with people because you're faster when people uh, show you stuff and it's a great skill to have when it's something that you just must know how he plays when you listen to a guitar player and say oh he's, he's got this great sound right there what is that and then you can go in and, and pick that apart and uh, use it yourself so that's all for now I hope that was uh, beneficial to you I'm going to do another video now bye <laughs>